Hello everyone, welcome back to Dead Man's Rest. Let's go ahead and continue. Next thing I remember, I was waking up to sunrise breaking over the farmhouse. I was busting for a piss and hungry as you like, but my joints were screaming. Didn't seem like anyone was coming to bring me anything, or let me out for a slash though. I wondered how long it'd be before they remembered that I was out here. Bill's face from last night was still etched into my memory. I'd fallen asleep exhausted after spending hours alone trying to figure him out. I shuffled a little trying to ease the numbness in my butt. Just as I was thinking about starting to work on my ropes again, I heard voices drifting over from the main house. Seems Bill was already up and about, along with his lady friend. Her voice is high and excited, piercing through the morning air. And that ain't even half the money. You don't even know, Bill. This all be worth it. Yeah, well, it better be. Bill's voice was deep and gruff like he was tired. Killing Mary wasn't no easy thing for me. I'm not a damn lost crawling over this place. We ain't got long to pull us off. Bill killed that one. Crossed in front of the barn door but didn't kick in that look didn't look in at me. Tried to act as if I was still sleeping. If I found my way out of here, having that kind of information would be damn useful. Maybe I could even go back to town and convince him I was telling the truth. Clear my name. But nothing else, it was something to be blackmailed Bill with. Trust me, Bill. We ain't got nothing to worry about. They get their land, we get our money, and we ride off into the sunset. The pair sat down in the center of the camp where the old flyer from the night was still but smoldering. The redhead was nervous. I could see her leg twitching as she sat down. She tried to convince Bill of something. I was sure as hell he knew she didn't know shit about it. Yeah, well, if it all turns out that good, I'll eat my own hat. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. But I'm willing to wait around another week at least to see the return on this. I'm sure by then it'll all be golden. Just you wait. She was enthusiastic, I give her that. I was just trying to piece together what it all meant. They've been paid by someone seeing to kill Dalton and we're waiting on the money. But why? From that, why did Bill agree to it all? If I knew anything about him, it was all they killed for principles. Not for cash. I was trying to make sense of what I heard. Bill turned his head and noticed me looking at him. Oh, you're awake, are you, McCarthy? He took a long strides towards me, and despite myself, I instinctively flinched. Look at that. Getting scared of me already. He leaned down, his broad body casting a shadow over me. You having fun listening to our private conversation? Tell you what, it's a special treat I let you in on the whole story. So as you know what will happen to your little friends in town. At this point the redhead had appeared at the door of the barn and was leaning at the edge, looking unimpressed. Bill gestured her at her without looking. This here is Nancy. She's been with me for, oh, about four years now. Five. Five years? Surprising me that any woman would stick around you that long, McCoy. I tried to put venom in my voice, but Bill just laughed it off. She ain't just any woman. She's Nancy Dalton. Mayor's wife. 
And then my eyes as I took in the statement. She'd run off and let the mirror to be with Bill. But I was right that not just any woman would be insane enough to do that. She must have really hated her life. Beyond that though, why'd she come back with a new lover to kill her husband? Even for the amount of money I assumed they were getting, that's both ice cold and very risky. I observed her, but she just tossed her hair and didn't seem bothered by a statement at all. X, so far as I'm concerned, even before he kicked it. Didn't ever love him. It's not me how cold she could be about a man she'd married. This woman is dangerous, that was for sure. Even Bill looked a little taken back at that, though he recovered real fast. Well, anyways. Since Nancy's from around here, she got a tip that things weren't going so well in town's elite. See, that's so I want to change your government around here. And they were willing to pay a lot for it. You're not a great stalker, McCarthy, so I'm sure you know this ain't my usual sort of job. This time Nancy asked and will, I could never say no to her, could I now? He looked over his shoulder with a simpering smile that didn't match his eyes. I didn't believe a word of it. He had his reasons for coming here, but it sure as hell didn't have nothing to do with her. She matched and fluttered her eyelashes. Dangerous then? Stupid. She believed anything Bill had said. I felt like I was at least getting a hand on these people. And a little advantage could help me get out of your I take it. See, for us it's a win-win situation. I get that old bastard on my back so I'm a free woman again. Ah. Benefactors get the land they want in Golders Rock. And Bill here gets a large amount of cash in his pocket for a real simple job so he can keep doing what he's doing without a worry. As she spoke, she reached over and massaged Bill's back and shoulders. And then reacted to her, so they continued to watch my face closely. Sounds too good to be true. So you ain't gonna get double crossed by your benefactor. Bill's head is worth a lot on its own. He's gonna set you up be on his way down here right now. That Bill crossed his arms and raised an eyebrow. Hmm, you're smart, McCarthy. But not too smart. Ain't you figured out yet who's paid us to do this? Thought it over, based on what little I knew of Golders Rock. Well, I didn't really know one, but to share it properly. I noticed there was some tensions between native tribes in town, but nothing out of the ordinary. Before I could think much more on it, Nancy spoke up. It's the natives, idiot. They were on reasonable terms with Earl, but the chiefs of our land, and Earl wouldn't give it to him. See, Hollis's ranch, that's Earl's brother, borders on native territory. And because he cared so much about his family, that spineless crew wouldn't hand it over. Even though Hollis never gave two shits about him. So the chief starts thinking of other ways to circumvent the politics and comes up with the best one. Have Earl killed by an American. Then when there's chaos and confusion, the young sheriff is drawn out, trying to solve the case as well as control the town. Sweep them and take back the land by force. Ain't nothing nobody could do about it. We get to ride off with our pay while they fight their battles and forget all about us. Best part is, they can't betray us because I was the one who dealt with them. And what sheriff would believe a Native American of a lady? 
far as Conrad knows, I'm clean, and that ain't changing. Nancy laughed herself smugly as Bull drew back and put his arm around her waist. I can't believe my ears. Betraying their own people for money, killing her husband, and probably countless others in town. I knew better than any of what Haynes crimes Bill had committed in the past. And we some men died on his hand, dozens of them. This one was on a whole other level. This was... This was a massacre. Stared hard at Bill, trying to forget him out. He was a hateful, awful, murderous man, that was for sure. And I fully believe he had no more remorse for his actions. But I also believe that in some dark and twisted way, he had a conscience and moral code of his own. He stared at me down as his expression flat. Shocked McCarthy? Well, don't worry too much about it. I'll probably let you live just long enough to see it unfold. And you'll be dead before we move on. And we won't have to worry no more. How's that sound? You're insane, Bill. I used his first name this time without realizing. I was in my thoughts before I got a chance to think them through. My voice sounded raw, choked. You lost your goddamn mind. Bill laughed real cruel. Well, if I had, then it don't matter anyway, because I've got nothing left to lose. Turned to Nancy with a predatory look in his eye. Come on, Nancy, let's grab some fun, shall we? He grabbed her waist aggressively and she giggled, letting herself be pulled in. Her hair turned away from me and began to walk out of the barn. My body reminded me immediately that I couldn't let him go yet. Wait. Can you at least lend someone to let me out for a piss? We had paused but didn't turn around. I guess all dogs have to let out in the yard once in a while. I'll have someone come out when they're ready. Then she laughed again and Bill's hand moved from her grip to her ass as she ushered her back in the farmhouse. Once again I was left alone. Practically, I began to try and plan a way out of this. Somehow, some way, I need to first stop this from happening. I need to warn someone. I don't know why. I don't know, but no button goes rock. Not really. But something about this didn't stick right in my head. That one man she screamed danger and seemed a little unbalanced. Maybe she managed to push Bill off the edge. For the reason this was downright wrong and nobody who called himself a man could stand by and watch it happen. I began working the ropes again. Didn't know if they were even friend, but I had to try. As of right now, I didn't have no better options. Soon I heard footsteps approach and thank the merciful Lord that soon that seemed fit to finally come out for me. Well, the guys who captured me, the small and mustachioed one, came into view while holding small play with some fixins. Boss said you want a piss or something? Told him you could grow in your damn pants, but seems he's a damn sight counter than I am. He sneered as he threw the food down on the ground and went to the back of the column and tied a rope. I hope they wouldn't know it's a friend, if there was any. I was in luck though, since he just continued taunting me, uninterested in the state of the ties. You must have some sort of tie in with the boss to get this kind of treatment. Or we just shoot him down and get on with it. After untying me from the column, he pulled him to rope like a lead. Like a lead, my bad. I rose and followed obediently while trying to keep the conversation going. Never knew what I might learn. Those thugs were normally the cleverest bunch. Trust me, this ain't about nothing but revenge. 
I've been chasing Bill for years. He just wants a little payback for he sends me down. I could believe that. Heard your name around, Blackjack. You've been abandoning his ass a long time. He ain't the rope hard. I wasn't expecting it to top onto the floor. Crashed my jaw into the ground and almost bit my tongue. So I struggled with my hands still tied together, I heard him laughing. I tried not to rise to it. He knew I was angry he'd be on his guard, and much less likely to make a mistake. He led me roughly out of the barn. My stomach growled and lugged back the food that was left on the floor. Oh yeah, but I ain't got all day. Reluctantly, I followed him out. We went up the gully and out behind a broken wagon at the far edge of the farm. He just stood there and stared at me. For a moment, I wasn't sure what he expected me to do. Well, get on with it then. Get on with what? I ain't got no hands. Piss or don't, that's your call. I ain't waiting forever. Look, I'm gonna need you to tie my hand. He grunted. You think I'm falling for that? I gave him a look like he was the dumbest thing on earth. Which honestly, he might have been. I ain't got no hands to do my pants. So unless you want to reach down and do it for me, and then aim at yourself so there's ain't no splatter on your boots, I'm gonna need to use at least one hand here. You can see me carefully for a moment, his mouth and mustache scrunching up all suspicious. Then reluctantly with a glance down my fly, he started fumbling at the rope to free one of my hands. As soon as it was out, I swung my fist hard as head. Connected the crack and my hand exploded in pain. He staggered back, clutching his head. Through the pain, I saw my opportunity and grabbed the revolver out of his holster. I held it on him and steadily to recover from the blow. That shit, you fucking! He suddenly realized his gun weren't in his belt no more. His eyes went wide as he looked up at me and straight down the barrel. Growling, he lunged at me. I wasn't expecting it, but I managed to size him just in time. I clobbered him on the back of the head with the butt of the gun. He went straight down, clasped onto the ground, and didn't move. Well, that worked out alright. Put the gun away in my own holster, but I took that long weight piss I'd been needing. I planned out what to do next. If I was out of camp for too long without making a move, I'd be caught by Bill. I couldn't afford to go back for my bag or damn everything for the food and water I've been so desperate for. Guess I had to wait till I got back to town. Even then, who knew that I'd get fixings? I guess I had my legs and I had a gun. But that'd be enough. I hid the dog's body in a little ditch and then headed out to Gildy as fast as I could. The further I was from Bill, the better. With slow going given, I had needed to drag nothing in almost a day. At one point, I stopped at the river and thought about it. But looking at the murky green just beneath the surface, I decided against it. Thirsty as I was, they weren't worth the risk of water disease. I pushed on through a desert, hoping to make my way back to town quick enough that Bill couldn't catch up. Suddenly, though, I saw something up ahead that made me stop short. Person. Slim figure, no hat, a bow, Native American. He turned to look at me calmly. I recognize him. It's Taza. Then back to what I heard about the Native Americans being involved in this whole thing, I was wary. Taza hadn't seen the type to be involved in any of that. 
and you're smart. I, mean, I can tell it didn't harbor no hatred for Americans. Besides, he told me himself he wanted Bill dead. Carefully, I raised a hand and he dropped his guard a little and nodded at me. I approached until we were face to face. Ah, Taza, nice to see you again. Likewise, Lee McCarthy. Have you been well? I shrugged. Hmm, y'all cut up in the summit? Look, I've gotta get back to town real quick. I've got Bill on my ass. Taz's eyes widened and flickered past me in the direction of the farm. You've come from the camp? Yeah, tried again, but it went south real fast. You on the way there? Yes, Ted. Then looked down at his feet and nodded. Well, like it is not, Bill won't be there much longer. As soon as he realized I'm gone, he'll be on a horse and chasing my ass down. I've got to get to town before that happens. I understand. I'll stay out of sight. Taza stood aside and allowed me to pass. Before I moved, though, I considered the boy. For all intents and purposes, he seemed as reasonable as any man. By chance, Nancy was telling the truth that it was his people behind all this. He could be walking into a horrible situation by going to kill Bill. Of course, he could have been worried to do it by his father just to shut Bill up, not that the job was done. But some deep instinct told me Taza wasn't the type of man who'd agree to it. I took a deep breath and decided to tell him. Look, Todd, before I go, I heard something at the back of Bill's camp. Now, I don't know if it's true or if it's just bandits blowing their mouths off, but they said it was your father who ordered them to kill the mayor. What? That's impossible. They've been raiding our settlement for weeks, taking cattle. There's no way my father would work with them. Besides, the mayor has always been fair to us. Much more so than most white men. Why would he want me killed? I held up my hands to their tired and indignant responses. I don't know, I don't know. It's just what they were saying back there. Something about a headland dispute and them heading off into the sunset after getting paid in gold. Don't pay no mind to it, I shouldn't have said anything. Just be careful at that camera. Huh? Taza looked shaken by what he said. More so, really, than if it was something he could easily dismiss. Perhaps there was truth to what Bill said after that. I know as I moved past him, headed on my way back to town, picking up the pace. As I glanced back at my shoulder, I saw Taza had moved a muscle, watching me go. I hope he'd be okay. The world needs more men like him if our people are ever gonna get along. What I didn't know then, while I was having my conversation with Taza, was that Bill had finished up real quick with Nancy. He led out to the barn only to find me gone, food untouched. Then he searched around and found his man in the ditch, disarmed and unconscious. He yelled in fury, grabbed the horse, and gone immediately, on the river down towards at the gallop. I have an hour after my conversation with Tazi, he thundered past. I didn't know then that just as I passed by the town's outskirts and clasped by the side of dead man's rest, sighing relief. Bill pulled up seconds later, cursing as he saw me vanish into the town center. I had no idea how close I'd come to my life running then and there. Luckily though, since I'd know nothing about it, my mind was clear and focused as I had right to share a situation. I'd have to tell him at least about the conspiracy. If he didn't believe me, well that was on him. My conscience would be clear. And even if it threw me and Jeff for the town, at least I'd be fed and watered. I 
I walked in the door and instantly heard the sheriff's loud commanding voice. You might as well to me, Nas was flaying and eyebrows furrowed, brandishing his handcuffs. McCarthy! What in the hell do you think you're doing back here after I told you we weren't supposed to leave town? I'm placing you under arrest on suspicion of murder. I held my hands up and surrender. Look, Sheriff, I apologize for sneaking out when I weren't supposed to. We got the wrong man here. The person you're looking for is Bill McCoy. I went to get him and get out of town, I'll admit that. But we're wrong. I was captured and found out it was down to him. That's why I came back to town. I escaped and I thought you should know who really done it. Carwright snorted. Blame it on the bandit, huh? Thought you were more inventive than that, McCarthy. I don't believe a word that comes out of your mouth no more. I'll damn well keep in the cell until something proves otherwise. He shot me backwards into one of the cells in the station. I could not but notice I was the only one here. I wonder what happened to one thumb Tony and what's his name. Had Bill actually got him out or had they gone to Hangman? Once I was inside the cell, the sheriff locked the door firmly and gave me a withering look. You'd have done better to stay well away from Golders Rock. So now you ain't going nowhere till I figure out what the hell's going on. Showed back in his office and slammed the door shut, leaving me alone in the station. Well, that could have gotten better. But at least in the air I see from Bill and knew that I'd be getting my next meal. All in all, it could have gone a lot worse too. I lay down in the bedroll and try to get some rest. A long later before I was woken by a harsh sound of boots outside my cell. I sat up and saw the sheriff walking past, accompanied by someone. Get a good view enough to see who. They walked in his office and with a quick glance around behind him, got right closed the door. I didn't think they noticed I was awake. Who could he be talking to? Did that have anything to do with Dalton? Or Bill? I moved as close as I could to the door and strained to hear. Couldn't catch nothing though, just the faint rumbling in the sheriff's voice. Collapsing and stared at the ceiling with a sigh. I was still starving. How long would it be till he's brought food and water? My stomach growled uncomfortably. Just then the door opened again. I sat up again, hoping to catch a glimpse of who the sheriff had been talking to. I saw who it was, I wish I hadn't. A shock of red hair, timid, innocent smile, and those high leather boots. Magic took on a big car right to visit. And judging by the look they both shot me as the machine made to exit the station, it damn well weren't good news. Oh shit. Bill out a trump card. After she was gone, the sheriff ran on me, his high voice high and accusatory. Didn't have nothing to do with it, huh? A little shit coming out of your mouth, McCarthy. That one there is Down's wife, and she told me all about your little scheme. So she was in town the night of the murder, and she saw you near Down's residence. So she even saw you checking out old Hollis's ranch the other day, too. So she fears her own life next. She reckons you're a scapegoat set up by someone who's trying to get out the Daltons. The sheriff slammed his hands on the Kyle's cell bars angrily. Who's your benefactor? Tell me who paid you to kill him. That was a long and low. Bill really had played this very well. I didn't see that there'd be any way out for me now. I told you the truth before, Sheriff. Bill's behind it. What's more, Nancy's work with him. 
fancy now, is it? Where'd you learn that name? Did your employer tell it to you? I ain't got no employer, I'm telling you, Cartwright. If you can't see I'm being honest, then that's your business. But I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Other than Bill's guilty, and that's that. Just then, my stomach gave another loud, insistent growl. We both paused. Oh, yeah, when's dinner? Cartwright glared at me and stormed away. How are you talking, McCarthy? I'll get your damn food. It'll be the last meal you ever have unless you cooperate with me. As soon as all this is done, I'm taking a date in the morning between you and the hangman. I got this advantage within the small room at the back of the station. First thing in the morning didn't give me a lot of time. But just as Nancy called it, the sheriff believed her over me. So there's no way the truth is gonna fly. I fell back onto the bedroll again, closed my eyes, pinching the bridge of my nose in frustration. There had to be something I hadn't thought of. Somewhere out. Something. I barely noticed his car I laid a tray down and stormed back in his office. Hungry and as thirsty as it was, my whole body is coiling his knots at the thought of the coming dawn. What the hell was I gonna do? The afternoon extended to night and it felt like it stretched on forever. I ate what he left me and curled up in the bed only trying to figure a way out of the situation. And no chance of picking the lock or bending the bars. This jail was solid. I gotta let Bill trap me like this. Shouldn't have seen it coming. Should just run away. Dan next town over and just jumped on the nearest damn train. Start coming back here and trying to do the right thing. I was damned if I was gonna do that again. I've been lived past the morning. Sound broke me out of my musing musings. It's the middle of the night, the sheriff had long since gone home. Who would be coming in here at this hour? Of course. Oops. Bill. Fancy seeing you here, McCarthy. His voice whispered out of the shadows as he stepped forward in the ray of moonlight. It was more dangerous than I'd ever seen him. For a split second, I was glad the bars between us. Thought you'd get away, did you? And there ain't nobody who gets away from me. Step closer, threatening. I could see the whites of his eyes. What are you doing here, Bill? Gonna taunt me in my final hours, is that it? You were for the hangman, then. Nancy did her job well. I'll give her that at least. How does it feel, Lee? Hear my first name slip between his lips, gave me a shiver, and were in a good way. It felt like a rabbit cornered by a hungry wolf. Briefly, I recall his angry, violent kiss and grip my teeth. How does what feel? Being an outlaw. We're one and the same now. You and me in the eyes of law. We ain't the same, Bill. You're one of man in every state. A known killer. Those are the men saw you shoot every damn one of your victims. And I bring you up for something they got no substantial proof on. So if I walk on this time, I'm a free man. I can go anywhere. You've got nowhere left to run. 
Bill was right up against the bars now, his eyes glimmering in the moonlight. I almost wanted to back away, but I didn't want to give him the satisfaction. My hands were balled up in the shaking, white fists. His tone was almost mocking his response. Right now, right here on this soil, you and I are just the same, Blackjack. I decided I was going to jab him around back. Let's see. Mm. Let's go at sure you want to find out how similar we really are, Bill. Hmm. Bill faltered for a bare hint of a moment. I recovered himself as fast as I could, blink and snarl like an animal. I ain't nothing like you wear matters, McCarthy. Just wanted you to know that it was like to be put in my place for once. Wrongly accusing the rod in the way. Call a criminal though you know you did it right. I couldn't quite believe Bill had this view of himself. Is that really what he really dishonestly thought deep down? There was some kind of martyr. So he was further gone in an insanity than I even I'd believed. Not really what you think, Bill. When you looked those men dead in the eye as you killed him, you thought you was doing right? I know I was. For all these more men like me, should be real men like you. Cocksuckers. Freaks. This time when he said it, it must felt like his voice trembled a bit. He was unhinged. I'm doing the work of God. He said that Bill, but have you ever met God? If he's up there and busy running hell in heaven, law, I doubt he's taking his time talking to any of us down here and telling us what to do. I moved a little closer to the bars. Bill appeared to be listening to me, though he looked like he might swing a punch at my any second. Despising with the depths of my soul, but nobody should ever pass up the chance that someone who needs a right from wrong. Has ever told you you're doing right? They say we're all his children, after all. The commandments? And one of them don't kill people? I think this ain't about God at all. It's about you. Well, any warning, Bill slammed his hands angrily up against the bars. They rattled loudly and shrank back a little on instinct. I'd gone too far. Don't you forget, McCarthy. Right now, I'm the only man which stands between you and the gallows. I could let you out of here right now, or I could walk away. Don't play a fire. Honestly, I didn't even thought of the notion that Bill might release me. But I already committed to having a steal a gun and shoot my way out come dawn. Bill backed away from the bars, throwing the palms of her hands, and looked over his shoulder out the window. Lava's beginning to gather. I'm gonna let you out, Blackjack. I put you near to teach you a lesson. That you ain't to run from me. If you learn the good and well, then you follow me out. And you don't try to leave. If you do anything untoward, Call Sharon, she is both hung rather than let you get away again. The intensity of the stare was staggering. I really believed him. He'd rather die himself than see me go free. Probably wanted to reject his deal flat out. But I want a sure chance of making out of this town alive, so I gulped and nodded. I hate this, but between Bill and Death, I take Bill. At least for now. When I survived tonight, I had a chance of working my way out of this alive. If 
For all that, Bill was the worst man I'd ever had the misfortune to know. Something about him seemed different this time. I'll admit I had some kind of more of an interest in finding out what it was. It looked great like a coyote and brought up on the sill from the outside. So as the door swung open, I felt a growing sense of dread. Breaking out of jail was a real offense. When I stepped out here, I'd be a criminal for real. But well, the sheriff had left me no other choices. Something was on its way up, and I had no time to find another man working this out. Reluctantly, I followed Bill, who grabbed me roughly and locked heavy handcuffs on me before I could blink. Well, shit. That was gonna be a lot harder to break out than some more ropes. Still, I was alive and I was gonna remain that way. So I'd take what I could get. Quickly, we heard out of jail and cross town before anyone else woke up. It's surreal, knowing I was going against the law. But I didn't have no other choice and I knew that. How would this be the last I'd ever see a goldless rock? That town had brought me nothing but trouble. We made it out into the desert and soon we'd gone far enough that even the bad old train station was out of sight. I reckon they should be far enough. Far enough? The stop pulled his gun out. I was suddenly sick with fear. Was he gonna shoot me after making me an outlaw? Had this all been some morbid little scheme? I would put it past the man, but I'd hoped, foolishly I guess, that he had more honor than that. I suppose when it came down to it, Bill was only ever got by his flawed morals, nothing more. Or tell him I should be a dead man. I think it's about time you pay me back before we go any further. Paired you back? What the hell are you talking about, Bill? You sneer and cocked the gun. Forgetting that you out of jail. It will thank you, President Isanor, before we go back to camp, I think. Before I could reply, Bill suddenly grabbed my shoulders and pushed me down to my knees. I struggled, but with the man hands cut, I couldn't stop him. He was a strong man. He grunted as he held me there. On his hand, he started undoing his pants. Oh no, 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 no. This was... I was... There was no wind held out ever. And then his pants were down, and there it was, hanging about three inches from my face. I turned my eyes away and revolted. Go on, then. You're gonna provide me a service since I so kindly let you out of jail. And you're gonna fucking enjoy it. Cause this is the kind of thing you abominable freaks live for, isn't it? So do it, and if one business where I'll kill you. I stood up a bit with defiance and the hatred I felt for him swelled in my chest. You're fucking nuts if I think I'm going anywhere near that. Get yourself off, you're so, de so desperate. The time grip on my shoulder and moved the gun so it was pointed directly into my temple. Cold metal pressing painfully hard against my skin. There's no way come hell or high water that I was gonna be touching Bill in any such manner. I'd rather be dead. Kendra stared him up at him defiantly. Shoot me then. I'm gonna. Just let me be clear, Bill McCoy. I only pleasure a man when I want to. And I don't want nothing to do with your cock. Now or never. You better damn well kill me or we're gonna be here a real long time. I'm gonna press the gun into my temple even harder. 
I was real done. I was so sure. And sweat ran down my neck and rivers. There was no way I was gonna submit the bill. It was all this was kind of bullshit power play. Trying to prove something? To self or me? I don't know. Whatever it was, though, it was disgusting and degrading, and wouldn't have no part of it. I'd be better off joining Jimmy knowing I'd be done right by me. His eyes turned sinister, a black anger swirling inside him. Why would he want to pull that trigger? But then he drew back and pushed me roughly into the ground. Fine. Nothing but that curt word, he turned away and started to pull his pants back up. What the damn hell just happened? Is he... Was he disappointed? I guess he wanted to humiliate me, but such a fail attempt should have ended with a bullet. Why was he continuing to keep me alive after all this time, when he knew I weren't gonna ever let him win? Perhaps even after this, he thought he could tame me. Maybe there was something else going on on the surface of Bill that I couldn't even begin to fathom. He finished with his parents and turned back to me with a Paulson and Gara. Get the hell up. Going back to camp. As terse as his words were, but there was something behind him that there had never been before when he spoke to me. Respect. Though I never needed nor wanted any kind of recognition or affirmation from the man in front of me, I was proud. Clearly, he had a lot going on in his head. Whatever way this played out in the end, maybe I'd made a difference. Maybe I came to see us more as dead animals, and if I didn't finish the job, then just maybe I'd be last. Couldn't say for sure, of course. It was something to cling on to as he led me, gun in my back, towards camp. I found myself half hoping the Native American boy would come out of nowhere and help. As we got closer and closer, though, those hopes died off. So he was smart, and he hated my warning to stay well away. Either that, we are gone back to try to find out about the murder. But it wasn't around to save me as Bill marched me back into the farm. <laughs>